provided by. Bring your eyes into the spotlight with Lumify Eye Drops. Lumify dramatically reduces redness to help your eyes look brighter, wider, and more luminous, radiant, vibrant for up to eight hours. Lumify. You won't believe your eyes. Hello, how can I... Sore throat pain? Honey Lemon. Try Vicks Vapocool Drops in Honey Lemon Chill for fast-acting sore throat relief. <sighs> Woo! Vaporize sore throat pain with Vicks Vapocool Drops. We're back. <laughs> yes, they are. And tomorrow, we're with the judges from AGT for their season 17 kickoff. Plus, we are talking all things fashion and euphoria with Zendaya. I'm still young and coming up, and I, and I just appreciate the love. All right, before we go, season two of the Netflix dramedy Russian Doll is streaming now. Fans have been waiting more than three years to see what's next for Natasha Leone's Nadia. Yes, and as for Natasha herself, mm. well, she revealed she has split from boyfriend of eight years, Fred Armisen. Happening now. A sigh of relief for a Paralympian whose stolen gold medals were finally returned. That's coming up. Do you know who your council person is? Well, that could be changing. Coming up, we're going to get city council members' reaction to their first look at a new redistricting map. Next. Plenty of clouds the past few days, but only limited real moisture to show for them. That could be changing, however, in the days ahead. We're going to talk about that in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, three gold medals back with their rightful owner after they were stolen over the weekend. Yeah, the video of the theft went viral. There you see it right behind us. Our Lee Waldman at Public Safety Headquarters. Lee, all that attention helped in the speedy recovery of these medals, correct? Exactly. The video that Jen Lee posted was shared and viewed hundreds of thousands of times. All of those eyes looking out for one person proved to be key in this case. There's some things that just people off and this tweet and what this uh, what this uh, perpetrator did a lot of people off. Chief McManus says a snapshot of Rogelio Solis, the man arrested in this case, was sent to their fusion center for identification. But without the horde of social media shares, this quick of a resolution wouldn't have been possible. If this individual who broke into Mr. Lee's car was either following this or had people that he knew that were following this and saw how it was exploding on Twitter. I, th I think that's why the backpack was left where it was. The backpack with Jen Lee's gold medals from his time on the U.S. men's sled hockey team was found at a San Antonio fire station the day after they were stolen from the rim. Today, the U.S. Marshals Service Lone Star Fugitive Task Force arrested Rogelio Solis on charges involving theft and burglary of a vehicle. He was found near Roosevelt Avenue and 410. Lee, a veteran and three-time Paralympian, says he's beyond thankful to have his medals back. There's a good chance I was ready to prepare for a replica medal, and, and, and you know, it's, it's great to have it, but it's going to be definitely different because those, this, these are right there on, uh, when we want it, right on the ice, you know, so definitely, definitely just... You know, still soaking it all in right now. On May 1st, Lee is heading to Washington, D.C. with the rest of his Paralympic teammates to go ahead and meet with the president. And he said he is so thankful to have his gold medals to take on that trip with him. I asked him if he's going to start reconsidering where he's keeping his backpack with his valuables in it. And he said, absolutely. Reporting live outside of public safety headquarters, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Glad he got those back. Thank you, Lee. Now to an update on a homicide investigation. The Bear County Medical Examiner has identified a woman found dead last week. She is 38-year-old Diana Jane Laurel. She and 36-year-old Rick Stepp were found with multiple gunshot wounds under a bridge on Everest Road in Loop 410. At last check in this case, no arrests have been made. We also have an update on a fatal fire from earlier this week. The man found dead inside a home on the city's south side, identified today as 54-year-old Robert Gene Johnson. He died on Monday when flames ripped through that home on South Flores near Proban Street. Firefighters had a hard time getting inside the home. When they did go in, they found Johnson on the floor next to his wheelchair. The cause is still being determined. Another thing being investigated, why Johnson was inside since that house was supposed to be vacant.
multiple fatal car accidents in just one night. And today we are learning the name of a man killed near Loop 1604 and FM 1346 last night. 77 year old David Gerald Wagner. He was driving a car that was hit head on. The other driver at last check was in serious condition. The speed believed to have played a role in a crash that killed a 21 year old man overnight. That person has not been identified. We do know he crashed on Pecan Valley Drive about 2.30 this morning. San Antonio police believe he may have been driving too fast when he came to a corner. He hit a utility pole and died at the scene. We're also working to learn the name of another man who was hit and killed by two drivers last night. San Antonio police are looking for those two vehicles. This happened around 9 on South Zarzamora near Ansley Boulevard. SAPD says the man was lying in the road when he was hit. Neither of the drivers stayed there at the scene. If found, they face charges of failure to stop and render aid. And a man dealing with a life-threatening injury after he was hit by a driver last night. The crash on Calabar Road in North Zarzamora. Police say the driver hit the man as he stepped out into the street. The driver did stop to help. He will not face any charges. After every census, the city has to re-examine its council district map for accurate representation. And after the 2020 census, that showed that the last decade of growth did not happen evenly across the city. Yeah, no surprise there. City council members were briefed today on a draft map that brings the districts closer to population size, making them equal. Garrett Berger tells us what they had to say. Garrett. Well, Steve, this map, which is drawn up by a council appointed advisory committee, it was drawn up in a council <laughs> in a series of public meetings by a council appointed advisory committee. Now, what they came up is up with is not the final product. This is just the first draft. Now, the map would shift the boundaries of every council district except District 3 over on the south and southeast side. The red lines on this map on your screen show that the current map boundaries. Now, District 8 would have to shed more than 20,000 people, while District 5 on the west side would pick up almost the same amount. Now, council members generally had positive or neutral reactions to the map of the day, although District 2's Jalen McKee Rodriguez did not like the idea of completely losing Brackenridge Park out of District 2, which is currently split between his district and D1. Councilman Bravo and I have had to coordinate more than a normal set of council members would regarding any one issue. And it would make sense at face value for Brackenridge Park to be in one district, but because of the nature of Brackenridge Park and its historical significance and its impact on neighborhoods, um, this might be one, ex one exemption to that. Though McKee Rodriguez said he would love to have the whole park in D2, the inverse of what it is in this draft map, he understands that District 1 would probably have the same concerns as he does. Now, the city is aiming to approve a final map in June. Three, there are at least four more committee meetings for the advisory committee, uh, and the city is taking community feedback on this draft map through April 29th. If you want them to know what you have to say about this, we have information on how you can submit your opinions on our website. Just find our redistricting story on KSAT.com. Live at City Hall, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Garrett, thank you. Now to a recall alert, this one about zucchini. If you bought zucchini from Walmart recently, time to check the label. World Variety Produce Inc. is voluntarily recalling its organic zucchini because it could be contaminated with salmonella. These are two count packs sold under the name Organic Market Side. No illnesses have been reported, but the FDA says customers who bought this should throw it out. More than 20,000 car seats also recalled today. They are the Cybex Serona M convertible car seats. The concern is over the foam padding. It's come, it's come loose and become a choking hazard. The parent company, Columbus Trading Partners, offering to mail a kit with instructions on how to seal the headrest foam. Notifications will be sent May 9th. You can also call that company at 877-242-5676. I always wanted to know what had happened to my son, and there was not really answers. Uh, Tomorrow at 5, a Rio Grande Valley mother shares the story of her infant son's death from a bacterial infection. A newborn, she says, was only ever fed a popular infant formula that months later was recalled. The government now testing her formula. 12 Your Sides' Marilyn Moritz shares her heartbreaking story tomorrow on the News at 5.
There is a new federal courthouse in San Antonio, and today it was a dedication ceremony for that new courthouse. U.S. Senator John Cornyn was the key speaker at the event. Cornyn part of the effort to secure funds for this new build since 2015, making it the eighth courthouse he's worked to build. Senator Corden also thanked Congressman Henry Cuellar for helping make this courthouse happen. Check out traffic right now. Let's go to 410 in Evers where there is a big backup. It looks as if there's some sort of an accident there right as you get off at 410 and that may be a little farther down towards Bandera Road. Again, it's 410 at Evers and you can see that there are construction crews out there as well as emergency crews. Not sure exactly what is happening here, but again, 410 in Evers is where the camera is. I believe we are looking west towards this accident. And despite all the cloud cover, we don't have the drizzle that we had this time yesterday. 83 degrees, our high temperature today. Right now, Eagle Pass at 84, Floresville 82, 79 West Kerrville, and 82 degrees near Lavernia. Plenty of cloud cover, just not a lot of moisture to really show for those clouds out there today. As we go through the rest of this evening, sunsets, 8.04 p.m., mostly cloudy. A little humid out there, and then some more patchy drizzle, but promising rain chances down the line. We've been talking about Monday and I've got an update to that forecast in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. It is a gift that saves a life. April is National Donate Life Month. We're highlighting the importance of being an organ donor. During today's KSAT Community Town Hall, we got the chance to hear from medical experts about what donating your organs can actually do for someone. According to Donate Life America, around 85% of patients needing a transplant are in need of a kidney. And an important fact, you only need one of your kidneys to live. What most people aren't aware of is that one kidney is often more than enough, um, meaning that not only can you survive with one kidney if you're a gifted one, but you can also survive with one kidney if you're able to give one. If you missed the town hall this afternoon, you can watch it right now on KSAT.com. We also have resources where you can learn more about organ donation. April also happens to be Autism Awareness Month, and in an effort to raise awareness, local artist Dimas Martinez is working with the Autism Treatment Center for its 2022 art contest. Dimas is known for creating customized kicks, so that's exactly what this contest is all about. Participants have till Friday to create their own custom kicks for a chance to win a gift card to Herwick's Art Supplies. This effort not only meaningful to the Autism Treatment Center, which helps hundreds of people with things like group homes and therapy. But it also has a special connection for Demas, whose son is on the spectrum. Helping others as well, especially in the community. You know, this is this is our city. We need to take care of each other. If you want to participate, all you have to do is paint, draw, color your own custom kicks by this Friday, April 22nd. Then email your entry to the address on your screen. Five winners will be chosen on Friday. Winners will receive gift cards to Herwick's Art Supplies. Some of those shoes look awesome. Yeah. Still ahead here on the News at 5, a new law supposed to protect you from surprise medical bills. But turns out there are some loopholes. What you should know before you visit the ER, a new doctor, or see a specialist. Coming up. Here's a look at what we're working on for the News at 6. He's accused of breaking into an apartment and opening fire. It's day two of the capital murder trial of Jonathan Johnson, but instead of family taking the stand, we're hearing from a firearm expert and the medical examiner about evidence and the cause of the death of two people. We'll have the latest on the six o'clock news. And if you've been hearing people sneezing a lot more lately, you might be wondering, is that allergies or could it be COVID with oak pollen peaking in the San Antonio area? An infectious disease expert tells us what symptoms to watch out for. All that and more coming your way at six o'clock. Well, nobody likes surprises when they involve medical bills totaling hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Consumers have complained about this for years. Well, this year, a new federal law kicked in. It's called the No Surprises Act. But 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains it doesn't cover everything. Surprise medical bills. It's a problem millions of people with private health insurance have faced for years. Now there's a new law designed to help. The No Surprises Act means that you'll no longer receive an unexpected medical bill 
because you were treated by a doctor or you went to a medical facility that you didn't choose in the first place. That's right, no more surprise bills from emergency room doctors or other out-of-network hospital providers like anesthesiologists and radiologists when you get care at an in-network facility. The Kaiser Family Foundation estimates the No Surprises Act will apply to as many as 10 million surprise bills every year. While it may sound great, the law has some glaring holes. Take urgent care facilities. Visits are only covered by this new law if it's licensed as an emergency provider. But how do you know that? Well, it's really best if you can prepare ahead of time and call several in your area and ask simply if they're licensed to provide emergency medical services. And then there are lab tests done at your doctor's office. Be sure to use a lab that's in network. Since the law is pretty new, hospital and providers are still adjusting to the new rules, which means they could accidentally send you a medical bill. If that happens, contact your insurance company to see what's going on. You may need to call your provider to resubmit the claim for full coverage. If that doesn't work, you can file a federal complaint online at cms.gov. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, we want to give you some information that we left out. <laughs> if you're wait, wanting to submit your art for that Autism Treatment Center art contest, the kicks, here's the email address, krwkicks at atcoftexas.org. We're going to leave it up here for a little bit. We have the link on ksat.com. Kind of important if you're going to enter the contest to know to the know email address to, to enter said contest. Yeah, somebody's got to see all this artwork. Yeah. Like, I mean, I wouldn't want to wear those shoes. Those, the Spurs yeah. shoes. I know they're awesome. Those I don't. I'd, I'd be afraid I'd mess easy. something up, I like a puddle wear. or something. Although that really hasn't been, that really hasn't been a concern weather-wise lately. Yeah, no. unfortunately, it hasn't been an issue. But we do have higher hopes for some real <laughs> rainfall down the line, and I'm going to start right with that. Let's get right to it. See that little jump there on Monday? That's the day we're looking at. We've been talking about it all week, and we finally did it. We boosted those chances up to 60%. We're gaining confidence and not only rain developing, but also better coverage of some showers and thunderstorms. So late Sunday through Monday is when we have the next opportunity. Let's talk about it. Plenty of cloud cover across our area today, but no good moisture to, so, to show for it broad system in the upper levels moving through the Northland and it's got some activity trickling all the way down the Mississippi toward the Gulf of Mexico. So there is some action out there, but that's not our system. We are watching this big swirl here in the Pacific Ocean. This is still far from the Pacific Northwest, but it is throwing some moisture into parts of Washington, Oregon, and even Northern California there. Beautiful looking system. That's our next chance of rain. And you switch over to the water vapor imagery. Just gorgeous view of this big, broad, upper level low pressure system that's going to be tracking eastward. Now, most of the energy with this will be missing us, but this will develop a cold front and that cold front's going to drop in late Sunday, early Monday enhancing our rain chances, not just because we have that cold front, but because we'll have some other ingredients here as well. And they should mix together just right to give us some beneficial rainfall. So let's go through time here. We get into Sunday evening. Parts of the northern hill country, Edwards Plateau, could get in on a few showers and thunderstorms. Most of us, however, through Sunday, pretty much dry. Sunday night, very early Monday morning through sunrise, some scattered activity likely to develop along that cold front with pockets of moderate to heavy rain. And then we get into early Monday morning through midday Monday and some off and on hit or miss showers and thunderstorms. As for severe weather, it's not out of the question, but right now, I'd probably say most likely not any severe thunderstorms. So that's what we're watching. We could see some decent accumulations up to an inch in a few locations. So cross your fingers for your neighborhood and your backyard. Of course, there's still a lot of time between now and then. So check back in and we'll give you the latest 82 right now. Dew point is 67. We're feeling that humidity out there. It's muggy. It's going to stay muggy through Sunday and Monday. Then behind that cool front Tuesday, Wednesday, we get another break from the humidity and the dew points drop off a bit. Temperatures now 
80s. Remember this time yesterday we were in the 60s? Big difference now. 82 Helotus, 83 Port SA, Converse at 84 degrees. We start the day tomorrow right near 70. Some mid 60s in the hill country. Most of us near 70 by the afternoon. Well into the 80s, even 90 degrees in spots. Seguin, Converse, Converse 90, Divine 92, and Floresville about 91. Here's a look at your 12 hour forecast tomorrow. Some patchy drizzle early, so the low clouds, they'll dominate tonight and they'll even fill in overnight tonight. And then it's going to be a little damp in the morning tomorrow near 70 degrees by the noon hour, starting to see some breaks in those clouds at 80 and then well into the 80s to near 90 by the afternoon and partly cloudy. Bit windy, bit windy every day all the way through the weekend. Highs in the upper 80s until Monday with that better chance of rain back down in the 70s. All right, thank you, Adam. All right, let's turn now to two guys who know a lot about blocking. Yeah. Did I mention two big guys two who know a lot guys. about blocking? One former Cowboys center, one current Cowboys center, all helping out for charity, along with their teammates. When we come back, more about blocking out hunger in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and an upset in the NBA playoffs. Coming up. Pro football coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. Even though Travis Frederick was forced into NFL retirement due to the Guillain-Barre syndrome that has not stopped him from raising money for blocking out hunger charities. Joining in his effort to feed the children in the Dallas-Fort Worth area by his replacement, Tyler Biotish, during the charitable event this week. They were joined by Cowboy standouts Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott. It's really important for me to be able to continue to give back to this community and uh, I'm really fortunate that we've been able to bring Tyler along to help uh, continue the tradition of having Cowboys players here. Just to be able to provide them meals and um, especially the kids that are struggling for hunger. Um, that's huge to me and to be able to do it on this level, it's, it's definitely a blessing for myself to be a part of that. The marquee matchup in the KSAP Pigskin Classic this coming August 27 will feature the Brennan Bears against the Steel Knights in the primetime game with the triple header. The Bears were beast in 2021 as they ran the table in the regular season to finish 10-0 overall. We're on their way to state with victories over Laredo United, Los Fresnos, Austin Bowie by averaging 59 points a game in the postseason only to fall to Lake Travis 42-17 in the state quarterfinals. Now they face the Knights to open their season after Steel did the same thing in the regular season, also going 7-0 in district, 10-0 with their season coming to an end in their 38-0 lost to Austin Vandegrift. You're the marquee primetime game. How does that feel? Oh, you know, it feels good. You know, I know our, our, our program, our community, we're, you know, extremely excited to be, you know, just to be asked to be a part of the game. So it's uh, it's very exciting for, for us. What made you get interested? Because actually you changed your original game to accommodate this. Yeah, you know, scheduling is, is more difficult than people think. And some of the guys, you know, had already kind of semi-committed to other opponents and that kind of a thing. So really it, it was a process to try to get all six teams together and get the time slots and all that stuff. But, you know, it all came together and here we are right now, you know, ready to go. So uh, I know everybody's excited to be here and I think it's a heck of an event. So we're really glad to be part of it. The football side of it starts at 11 a.m. on that Saturday, followed by the games, as you can see, at 3.30 and 7.30, starting with 11.30 between Smithson Valley and Reagan. The New Orleans Pelicans pulled off the upset of the NBA playoff season so far by knocking off number one seed Phoenix on the road. That's after the Sun star player Devin Booker had to lead the game in the third quarter with tightness in his hamstring after scoring 31 points in the first half. Brandon Ingram was on fire with 37 points, 11 rebounds, and 9 assists in the 125-114 to 114 upset. Now there is talk that Devin Booker may not be able to play for the next two games, that could be a problem. I could spell trouble. Yes, it did. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. All right, before we go, I want to show you 410 and Evers. It's actually hard to tell, but it's about to clear up. You can see they have the vehicle that was stalled there or in an accident on the back of the tow truck, so it looks like things are about to clear at 410 and Evers, the off-ramp there. Thanks so much for watching the news at 5. See you back here at 6.